If you look at rappers, their success rate, how hard it is to become successful as a street artist within music that's already hard. And then the additional difficulties of being a street artist, all right? Having to look over your shoulders, having a higher insurance to pay venues, having venues that don't want your ass to be there. All these additional things that come with being that. And then we're, yes, shining a light that yes, this person can make it out. But should we show, shouldn't we show other ways that niggas can make it out? What up, what up, what up? I'm Brand Man Sean. And I'm Corey. We are back with another episode of No Labels Now. Necessary podcast. You can catch us every Tuesday, every Thursday on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, wherever you stream your podcast here at the intersection of creativity and currency. This is No Labels. Today, we're going to talk about the influence of music on culture and how you can use that for yourself. Jacory is going to violate one of our black kings. But first, we got to talk about the gift and curse of rap music in a real way courtesy of some commentary from Jid's manager, Barry Hefner. If rap music has a 23-year-old, $200 million man ready to lose it all, what do you think it's going to do to these kids that have nothing? This is a quote from Barry Hefner, manager of Jid, asking, for real, like literally, we've seen a basketball player in real time, if y'all don't know, Ja Morant is out here doing some things, putting his basketball career at risk 200 million dollar man based on rap music it's pretty clear like a lot of times we can say oh you don't know where the influence came from nba young boy yeah, straight was, straight up in the dark. right <laughs> and this is where we go back to our conversation on the gift and curse of hip-hop mm -hmm. rap to be specific because we know that all of hip hop, well, hip hop is starting in a pretty positive place. And then we know how rap evolves and became a certain culture. So we know the part we're talking about. For those mm -hmm. of y'all who are like, oh, all the rap, all the hip hop. No, let's let's get to the real conversation. Let's not have any distractions. Mm -hmm. If rap music has a 23 year old, $200 million man in the NBA who is not from the street, street, streets for real, right? Not living that day to day. It doesn't mean that he doesn't know anybody, doesn't have any friends who have been about that life or done some, you know what I mean, sketchy things, some illegal things. But if you have a guy who's can't keep some, keep himself from holding a gun on live, goes on live, holds a gun up, does a lot of other things. We're not going to get into all that other stuff. Gets suspended for this shit, comes back, and then basically a few weeks later does the same shit. Where is that influence coming from? Yeah. All right. Clearly rap music. So I want to we want to talk about this conversation that Barry Hefner so so beautifully, eloquently put out there. Right. He said, I wouldn't be who I am if I didn't personally express myself and ask questions surrounding the business and culture of which I love and dedicate most of my time to. And I think that's an important part. I love this shit. I spend time in this shit. Right. I know what it can do. We do as well. Right. But I know what it can do. I posted this tweet yesterday and it sparked all types of responses versus, uh, from are we in the 90s again to but they didn't want to have this combo, but they don't want to have this combo, which is a real thing. I, a lot, I feel like a lot of us don't want to have that conversation. Mm -hmm. But my question is geared towards the quick kids. I think what, the pu what puzzles me most, as much as we benefit from this fruit bearing tree of rap and the culture, to act like there isn't any social responsibility that also comes with it is crazy to me. We can't say that rap is the most influential genre of music and then deny its influence on the youth. Exactly. Right? Yeah. We can't say music is marketing. Music is one of the most powerful ways to influence culture and then be like, well, you know, it doesn't affect kids. It doesn't affect people in general. I remember seeing DJ Envy say that shit one, uh, one time like, saying that the music doesn't it like didn't affect him da, 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 and and doesn't really affect people it's all on them look i am i am 1000 percent the self-accountability man <laughs> however part of the accountability is understanding that you can put people in an environmental state in a mental state to have a harder time to reap the benefits of accountability mm -hmm. to even understand what accountability is what the right actions are so if you why would we start our people like 
beyond behind the finish line. No, not behind the finish line, behind the start line. Mm -hmm. In a lot of cases, that's that's what we're doing. Now, of course, I love rap. I'm not saying get rid of rap, I, but this is just like straight facts, right? Yeah. Marketing is marketing. Yeah. yeah. Right? And I feel like if you like most people, most rap music fan listeners, if you really think about it, you can think about a time when the music either personally affected you and your life choices or mm -hmm. the life choices around you, right? Like I watched, like I grew up and watched, you know, young Jeezy make a group of adults want to vote for Obama. You know what I'm saying? Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's crazy. like he literally changed the entire political narrative mm -hmm. with one song, right? And we can't deny that. Like yeah. I remember being a 16 year old and listening to uh, My Wowie by Kid Cudi for the first time and thinking like, man, I can't wait till I smoke weed one day, right? Cause like, <laughs> just, he made that shit sound yeah. crazy in the music, right? I was like, damn, yeah. he's like, he having fun and you know, he's living ethereally and shit. So it's- Juice World told Future, yo bro, you had me on the lean. Yeah, he did say that, yeah. And yeah, so I think, you know, what gets me with rap sometimes is like we will acknowledge the positive influences, like I said, but we brag about the Jeezy and, and, and um, Obama, then that's a that's a big win for rap culture to this day. You yeah, know what I'm saying like my president is black, my Lambo's blue. Shout out to Henry the Business. Can't too. even vote yet. I don't think I could. I don't think I could vote yet. Nah, you couldn't. Yeah, I couldn't. But, <laughs> but it's like, but we 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 brag about the positive influences. We deny the negative influences. But to acknowledge one, you have to acknowledge the other, right? There's, yeah. there's good and bad that comes with influence either way. You know yeah. What I'm saying? Um, and so yeah, I don't know, man. I, that's why whenever people make the argument that it doesn't oh what kind of idiot would listen to a rapper what kind of idiot would fall prey to the stuff that's in the music it's like your 13 year old idiot <laughs> you know what i'm saying your yeah. 10 year old idiot might might you know what i'm saying might start listening to some shit bro even he used the example of job ja morant but you know like i went to a, a private college right so i went to a private college with kids a lot of very affluent you know black people and people in period mm -hmm. And I was saying them motherfuckers, motherfuckers come from, you know what I'm saying, two parent this household, is, you know what I'm saying, million dollar income parents, yes. crazy businesses. And they emulating the same shit they hear in the music, right? Because, yep. because the culture is the culture, right? So that's why I say, bro, like we all at this point have enough examples, bro. real world and personal and, and around us, real world, where we know this is a fact. This is the shit that's always irked me. I've said this before, right? I grew up in a certain neighborhood. Um, had family in certain neighborhoods mm -hmm. and from certain places. And I don't put I don't like put myself off to be the most street nigga in the world, uh, the worst environment in the world. But there were other people. Matter of fact, I didn't even ever look at any of the way places I came up in as hood until other niggas said their parents can't go there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like for real. Yeah. Because I went to a school at, at one point I got shipped across town, right? And um and, in their first prince water. <laughs> yeah, in ways, for real. <laughs> for real, right? Got shipped across town. Went to school, though. It was not like one of those, hey, I go to get shipped across town and I'm only with white people. I got shipped across town. One, it was all cultures, but it was like a whole bunch of smart black people that got shipped across town. But most of them got shipped across town from a different side of town than I was. And I was like, dang, these niggas got two-parent households. Like To me, that was like... Like, oh, these niggas got two parents and all oh, these niggas got some pretty big houses, which aren't that big in hindsight. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'll be looking at these people who are were in better environments than me act as if they related to the things from where I'm from way more than I am. Mm -hmm. Right. It was confusing as fuck. But that was rap music. Yeah. That's what it, it did. Like to me, it's like, oh, yeah, like this might be my real life home. Like some of these niggas y'all talking about are actually. Like my brother's friends or something like that that type mm -hmm. of shit, right? Yeah. Family, uh, friends and things that, you know, unfortunately passed and things like that because of like the gangs being a part of the gangs that they were uh the day like called out. And I just didn't understand that shit. It's like nigga, like from all I know, niggas are trying to get out of this shit. Like most people don't really wanna like go into it. Yeah. But I feel like rap music started that space where people from outside of it saw the romanticization of it so much, right? We started to put it on a pedestal, the street shit specifically, and that's where the damage came from. Mm -hmm. So that's the critique, like Barry said, you can love something dearly and still be be conscious and critical of it at the same time. Got to. Like, bruh, like how can we navigate this? Because we do want the opportunities for the people who are from that environment and can make it out with music we want them to make it out yeah. with music. And we want them to share their stories. And know, we like, want them to share their stories, yeah. right? But 
I don't know. Do we want them to share stories? <sighs> when we look at the macro, I'm not saying personally that's how I feel now, but when we look at that macro of the actual impact, yeah. sharing a story is still marketing. That's the problem with marketing. Yeah, marketing happens true. whether you want it or not. Me saying, yo, I, I slit my arm, right? Because I felt bad. That's marketing to somebody else that, yo, when you feel bad, slit your arm. It's not a huge, it's not a natural thing to do certain things just because you feel a certain way. Yeah. It becomes a common thing. And I'm going to do this because I'm I'm depressed. Oh, I saw my dad drink when he was going through certain shit. And now I'm drinking because I'm feeling the same way that I saw him feel. Like All of that shit is like just exposure. Marketing is simply the exposure at the end of it. There's st strategies to channel the impact of it. Mm -hmm. But all of this shit is marketing. Right. So we look at somebody being successful as an artist, sharing their story. The story might be that of of a struggle that people outside the hood can't relate to, right? Not that only people in the hood um, are the only ones who struggle, but you get what I'm talking about at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, one is the impact. We see somebody doing some stupid shit. And that, first of all, let's let's stay on Job and Rant for a second before we get to the other part. Bro, the reaction from people on Job and Rant is so crazy because so many people, it's just like, nigga. <laughs> that's all that's really what it comes down to yeah. like it's one of those collectives like bro we can't really say shit <laughs> like again i i can't tell you how many people experienced it just how i did where so i was at my uh homeboy proposed we were at his like the after party i guess you call it, it was mother's day dinner and um his brother-in-law was like man bro this man job man like they, they were suspending him and i'm like they suspended him they just now suspended him from that shit that he did like a couple months ago or whatever that like that's that's late that's weird and i thought he was already out and he's like no he did some other shit like what do you mean he did some other shit like yesterday the same shit yeah. yesterday like this doesn't make or or the, or, or the day before yesterday was like it's like what yeah. and everybody pretty much had that same thing like what do you mean no he, he already did that way he did the exact same thing not something else the exact same thing <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought that shit was deja vu when I saw it. I was like, I, I was like, man, is the clip going viral again? And yeah, so my homie was saying something. Oh, this just happened. I was like, oh, okay. This doesn't matter, bro. So after that, you're just like, <laughs> how? Why? You can't, you can't make sense of it because it's too soon. Right after, all right. So, yeah, no lesson learned. <laughs> and then somebody, somebody was like, yeah, man, he's an NBA young boy fan. That's that says it all. Look. I'm not gonna go that far <laughs> and, and say that because I don't really know a, a lot of them. Be angry, man. Hey, I don't. I don't know a lot of them <laughs> personally. I see them online, but you know, I don't, I don't know many personally um, in that specific younger age group, right? That I that I get to talk to. Yeah, they be angry. <sighs> yeah, a lot I, of pent up aggression in that fan base. We got a lot of music today, like I, you know, that does that. So we go through the era of the depressing music, and you see all these people. Be yeah, depressed, yeah, be sad, right? Be yeah. sad and do emo shit and all those type of things. You have the angry music and you see people doing this shit. That's a clear example that music is marketing. Steve Stout will tell you that there are cultural things that you can, um, uh, you can assume from music. You can look at music and almost use that as a data set to see how people are going to vote, mm -hmm. right? Like see how people are going to buy. Mm -hmm. All that is influence. It's reason that niggas want to put their bottles. In an artist video, it's reasons that they put their clothes on artists. They want artists to talk about all this shit, right? It's a reason that all that stuff exists. So, like, we know it's marketing straightforward. Getting back to the street thing, we talked about this uh, right before the pod, and we're not probably going to put out the talk where we talked about this earlier either. Like, we, we had a conversation. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And yeah, it's just yeah, like, yeah. I don't know. Like, it's just been too long. I feel like. I don't want it to go out, yeah. but we're going. So we're just going to have it right here, <laughs> the conversation. But like, if you look at rappers, right, their success rate, all right. You look at music in general, the success rate, how hard it is to become successful as an artist, how hard it is to become successful as a street artist, specifically within music that's already hard, and then the additional difficulties. Of being a street artist, all right, having to look over your shoulders, having a higher insurance to pay venues, having venues that don't want your ass to be there, mm -hmm. all right, all these additional things that come with being that, all right, cool. And then we're 
yes, shining a light that yes, this person can make it out. But should we show, shouldn't we show other ways that niggas can make it out? Because that's one of the hardest fucking ways to make it out. We're leading people down a road of such low probability. And when you look at those rankings, which we talked about earlier, that came out when they said that Indian Americans, I forgot all the rankings down, but it was the ones that eventually came up with Ebony K. Williams and Charlotte Man. And I'm talking about when Ebony said she don't want to uh, marry a bus driver and they, she wants to hold blacks to a higher standard, right? Indian Americans were like 119000 as their median income or some shit in, in America, average salary, something like that, or household income. One of those numbers, I think black people were around like 28000 White people are not at the top, which is a whole nother, uh, <laughs> a whole nother conversation because I always talk about focus. Like when you know how hard you can focus and then other shit can happen around and you miss everything going on around. And at, there becomes a point where black people are focused on white people so much that they're forgetting that there's other people in the world, other things going on, everybody else leveling up and you forgetting about your own shit. Yeah. Right. And making money too. Cause we watching their ball so hard. Yeah. Right. Keep your eyes on your own page. But like to that point, they have what the doctors, the lawyers, the engineer, those typical jobs that we hear like the stereotype. Oh, if I'm not one of these. My parents aren't going to be happy about it. We say, we hear the same thing with like Nigerians. Um, and many other people that immigrate mm -hmm. to America, right? They go for those primary jobs. Why? Because there's a higher success rate. Mm -hmm. There are systems that are already built. As an artist, you got to pave your own fucking way. Yeah. So when we talk about rap or go to the league, nigga, that's hard as fuck, right? Going to the league, low as probability. We might represent most of the league, but still it's so few of us. And then being an artist, in general, it's hard being a street artist, again, as I already said earlier, is even harder, especially the conditions of it. Mm -hmm. So like showing us showing such limited and difficult to achieve ways of success when other people can be average in another field and live a better lifestyle is worse for the community on a macro level. I know we want to have our expression. I know we we are creative. That is something that we have. We, we, we're great at it. We are extremely innovative. We're extremely innovative, but through that, we still have to look at, all right, the whole, what's great for the macro of the community, and are these images the best images? These are the questions that we don't like to talk about, right, on the open platforms and just put out there. And because you see how quickly it goes from just this, what's the influence of rap, to here's all these other factors and this is kind of what the fucking influence looks like. Mm -hmm. And then how hard is it? So outside of people trying to be something that they're not, that's already going to put them in more danger because there are other options. There's also, well, shit, b trying to be that thing that they're not, not only puts them in more danger, it's harder to be successful if they really see that. Or the other people who are in the, truly in the position, the only way we're giving them to see out or the way that we're marketing the most for them to get out is actually the hardest way for them to get out. Yeah. All right. Quick second. Have you ever seen an artist catch some traction and then they start to move? The numbers start to grow. They might even go viral. But then fast forward a year from now, somehow their numbers haven't really grown that much. They dropped back close to the same monthly listeners they had before the traction and viral moment. Well, that's because you have to know how to convert those moments into careers. And we've done this again and again with not only songs, but artists. And so has J.R. McKee, who's been a part of helping artists like Lil Durk, Rod Wave, Justine Scott, and Money Long. And we just did a collab where J.R. McKee does a step-by-step -step breakdown of how he took Money Long from zero to millions of monthly listeners and winning a Grammy over Beyonce, Mary J. Blige, and Jasmine Sullivan. Check out this breakdown while we still have it up. You can check it out at www brandmannetwork.com slash Grammy. Don't forget the www or it won't work. Again, that's www.brandmannetwork.com slash Grammy. Back to the video. So before like, we continue this conversation, we're going to play this quick clip for from NBA Youngboy. I'm not going to lie. Some of y'all might have difficulty understanding it. So Corey is going to interpret. <laughs> the shit I spoke about. Look at the shit I put in these people's ears. 
Man, I feel very wrong about a lot of things. How many lives I actually am responsible for when it comes to my music? How many kids and people have gotten a call or put this shit in their ears and actually went hurt someone? And now I'm sitting back like, damn, I can't do it all in one day, but I promise to clean whatever I can clean. But it's going to take time. What are you talking about, Corey? Come on, Corey. So what he's saying here is that, you know, um, he was once foolish and never really considered the impact that his, his music was having on the lives of others. But as of lately, he realizes, you know, that, hey, there are people, you know, making bad decisions, doing bad things while listening to me. And now I vow to do all that I can to, to change that impact mm. and, and be a better influence for the world. I once was lost. Now, huh? But now I see <laughs> oh, well. these niggas doing fuck shit because of me. Because of me. That's what he's saying. And I feel like that's a. I don't know, man. I always wonder at what point do artists realize it? Like, how many people do, does it take for you to talk to or see results from before you start to go, like, damn, man, my shit is influencing people? You know, because I would think, because that clip looks like it couldn't have been no longer. It's like relatively year, new. You're new. Exactly, bro. Yeah. It's like, but you've been Rocking in that young boy for a minute, you know, so you just, it's just well, like, your credit. Before we got on the pod, you talked about him being on house arrest for a minute. So maybe he wasn't outside to see, in right. his case. I think I got Zoom. <laughs> he got Instagram. He could have hey. been said this. No, nah, but... Hey, but and he just did J. Cole. <laughs> That's, a whole, That's a whole nother story. That's a whole conversation. That's a whole nother story. You're going to diss the, the solution. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, which, you know, yeah. I would use artists like him because they're, those artists like J. Cole are kind of like the other side of the spectrum, right? Like maybe had similar experiences, then choose to walk the same path as you, but finds a way to relay the message, paint, tell the story, but still push it towards a more positive message, right? Because to, to the point you made earlier about, you know, storytelling is still marketing and it's been documented for thousands of years that story form is the best form of marketing, right? Yeah. Storytelling is the best form of marketing because it's a way for me to entertain you and get you to at least stick around for whatever message I want you to catch mm -hmm. from, right? You at least gonna ride the wave and eventually that wave gonna take you through the point that I want you to, want you to go through. So that's why I brought the point like, you know, I think like there's room for them to tell the stories. There's room for, you know, the stories to influence the culture in a different direction. It, it always just kind of comes down to delivery, right? Mm -hmm. Like I said, like two artists can have the exact same, we both could grow up in a fucked up neighborhood have you know almost not made it out you know what I'm saying walk a very similar path until the split in the road kind of happens and like hey you're gonna almost go glorify it and make it look cool or make it look fun I'm going to talk about the real aspect of it now I, what I do think the downside of it has kind of come to is that rap is more mainstream now right so whereas I think there were people who used to make the argument that rap and hip-hop were stories from the people in the culture meant to kind of go back to the people in the culture is, is now reached far beyond the black culture, right? So now there are people who are just in it for the entertainment value of it, right? It's like going to a museum. Like I like going to museums and like, oh, let me look at this ancient, you know, feudalism Japanese art and look at the shit they was making while they was cutting each other's heads off and, and putting them on pipes. I don't have any desire to go back in time and, 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 and see that, right? But I look at music the same way. There are kids who listen to this like, damn, that's what's going on on, on the other side of the tracks. Damn, that's crazy. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, you know, um, and then there's now just a larger percentage of them who pick it up because, like I said, it's, it's mainstream culture now. Like, it, it looks cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, we pay attention to the, the to your point, the, the top point oh oh one percent of people that make it through that to become mainstream. They, they do make it look fun. You know what I'm saying? They make it it's like you just hanging out with your homies all day, making money. And every now and again, the nigga talk shit and you got to take him out. You know what I'm saying? Shit, it feels like a big game to a group of people who right. don't have the inner culture knowledge to understand like what the bigger message is. Inner culture knowledge. Huge. Mm -hmm. I was watching an interview with Rich Paul. It was uh, like the rap it's radar. Boyfriend. Yeah. Bruh, you really just call Rich Paul Odell's boyfriend? Get the fuck out of here, bruh. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, nigga, you trolling the shit out of me, bro. Come on, don't do this to this great black man. No, nah, no, nah, I fuck with Rich Paul, man. <laughs> don't do this to this I great like Rich black Paul man. Rich Paul man. I fuck with you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> don't do this to this great black man. Yo, <laughs> this, uh, but not for real, this, I connected when this man said, because he said something I always say. He said that the agents and shit, right, they be saying some fuck shit. They be doing some crazy things, right? 
And the interviewer, I think it was Elliot, might have been B. Not Dot, basically asks, like, does he do some of the tim- similar tactics or he does he get back at him in that way? Whatever. And he was like, I don't do those same things because I come from an environment where doing certain things has a consequence. Mm-hmm. So you're just trained in a certain way. Even if you know this is a different environment, it's really hard to like adjust from that. And it's the same way. I don't do certain shit. Mm-hmm. Like, and I don't talk about certain shit. Like some of these stories that niggas talk about because just because it's popular in blogs on in hip hop, like I just cannot do it because I am now inserting myself in some shit and being inserted in any way, I now like see the dominoes that mm-hmm. Would be in my mind my fault because I know how it worked. But then you look at some other people who are like, like I always say, like the white journalists that go into O Block, right? They just yeah. do it as, a, yeah. you know what I mean? Like for me, like you have to have a certain ignorance to be able to do it in the way that they do it yeah. as a true, like with a true passion, with a true like a smile on a your smile face. on your face, right? <laughs> yeah, and yeah. and think it's cool. Unfortunately, I mean, not unfortunately, I guess fortunately for them in this case, there's like this divide, kind of how Nipsey said many times, we're looking for people that like they look like us yeah. and, and hurting ourselves. So they there's like this weird line of protection many of them have. But that was kind of one of the things that was weird on the rise of like academics when he was talking about the Chicago shit, right? Mm-hmm. It's like there had to be a disconnect of not knowing what it comes comes with. Like he had to not come from a certain environment to just do that. It's, it's, it was hard to see him from coming or being around certain things and doing that. Cause I don't think he seemed just as innocent as many of those other journalists that goes in when he was doing it and then learn over, over time. But the point is again, yeah, that's that, that training. And then, and, but when you have people from that don't come from, from certain environments and we're marketing this to them now, all of a sudden, like even our own it could be black because every black person isn't from the hood let's be clear and we don't want them to all be from the hood they don't understand the rules they come in they do shit and and act shit thinking it's all fun and games i'm gonna go to this party i'm gonna go to this club over in this space because i heard it's hard over there i've seen there's people i went to school with that i saw ruin their entire life and they were on a path and they had an education they were smart as fuck but they wanted to show themselves to be something that they weren't. And it was very clear. And their whole, the whole thing was like, and this is like in seventh grade where we could be like, bro, like, why are you being so fake? Why are you being so fake? By 11th grade, your right life is ruined. Right. Yeah. I've seen that shit over and over again. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think too, cause you, you said something that made me, uh, made me think about something, right? Like thinking about people who are outside of the culture that, like I said, really just consuming this entertainment. It's no mm-hmm. different than, Going to the movies and, and watching like Shot Us Four or something for them, right? Like listening to a new <laughs> yeah. NBA Young Boy song. Yeah. And there's a situation now that this made me think of where there's a YouTuber named Trap Lord Ross who went mm-hmm. viral recently for making like this documentary style video on King Von, mm-hmm. right? And King Von's people are pressing him, like, yo, why'd you put this out? Why'd you put this stuff out? And he's like, well, I mean, I'm not doing anything but going through his public tweets and public information. See, and, that's and that shit. so innocently. Yeah. It's like... But to your point, right, it's really? like <laughs> going back to the 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 music is kind of went beyond just a cultural thing and now it's being consumed by people who don't understand the inner cultural workings. That King Von's people are looking at like, yo, you talking about this thing out loud like there are real families of people to be affected by it. Yeah. To try Lil Ross is content. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. hey, bro, you talked about it. You put it out there. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't oh, be... Yeah, your you, life is content. Yeah, like you can't put it out there to that degree and then be upset when a fan finds enough interest in it to do a deeper dive than maybe anybody else has decided, maybe even the police have decided to do, right? Like that that comes with you putting out your story and putting out your narrative, right? Like it's gonna True. hit somebody. It hits a, a bunch of, especially if somebody as big as King Von and, and Dirk and all them, like it hits a bunch of people and it, uh, the decisions made from listening to that shit off in a thousand different directions, right? His direction just, the direction he chose just happened to come back and fuck you up. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's all it is. But it's like, there are so many different, um, like, so many risks that come with it, right? It's like, you have the cultural impact, like we talked about. You have the outer cultural impact that comes from it, right? Like, perceptions from other groups, people, and the decisions they make around you or, or, or to you because of that type of things, right? Um, and then you have, like, the fan impact and, like, what the fans decide to do with that, that information that you give them. And, like, I don't think a lot of artists think about, like, bro, like, like to the average music consumer, like your fans are a reflection of you. Cause I'm assuming that this person that likes you probably listens to you a lot. I'm saying watch this. I'm like, yo, bro, if if I'm watching your music make 
17 year old kids, white kids, wild out. I'm assuming you're a wild individual. You know what I'm saying? Like, are you saying some wild shit? You know what I'm saying? Yep. And, and I'm going to have a certain perception of you from a, a, a fan standpoint and a business standpoint to the point a point you made earlier, right? Like, now I'm like, bro, I seen what your fans look like at fucking rolling loud. I don't want nothing to do with you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, you're up in my building, fucking yeah, shit up. Yeah, hell no. No, you can't get the sponsorship mm-hmm. deal. So, but I don't think those are things that get thought about, right? When the artist lives the experience they have, right? Which is they, they can't, they can only do so much of, about it in, in certain instances, right? They live the experiences they have. They put it on wax. They put it out, and then at that point they can't control mm-hmm. what happens. You know what I'm exactly. Saying? What, what happens from it, and we see the backlashes come in a bunch of different ways. And I just I don't think enough artists either they don't think about that, or they don't care about it because it is very rare that the it is very rare that the the consequences of an artist's music reaches them. We we have a handful of examples of music: Tupac, King Von. I'm saying Juice World, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. all of music history, it might be like 40. You know what I'm saying? You're creating use, you're attracting energy. Yeah. Again, back to the, the people, or then you're not wanting those people to be out. Cause it really don't even matter having insurance or not. When you get to a certain age, bro, you got your life that you're moving along, like you really don't want to use your insurance. It don't matter of if, if a nigga can bump my car and I can have somebody pay for it, even if I'm not injured or nothing like that. It's like, I don't want to go through the trouble of waiting for the shop to do my shit. Like, I don't want to go through the trouble of waiting for somebody to fix my venue and all this stuff. So people will avoid those problems if they can. But it comes down to this. Music? No. I start with stories. Because you mentioned storytelling, like again and again, over time, since the beginning of time, right? Mm -hmm. This is how we've shared and moved information along. Information gets moved along just by speaking communication, but a story is captivating. Yeah. Sound, music is hypnotic. You put that shit together, the influence is profound, bro. Like you can't like ignore the impact that that has. Artists are creating little thems, right? Mm-hmm. Little soldiers as people listen. This is why you'll have people do stuff at, like the back of the day. People probably still do shit like this. You know, you go to sleep, and put some headphones on yeah. and have like a self-affirmation yeah. <laughs> thing playing yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Waking up and now my subconscious has been affected. You can say, oh, yeah, I'm not a little kid. But if I consume this type of content day in, day out. It's going to impact me in some way. Yeah, I might not go out and slap somebody without any, you know, need for them to be slapped without without any kind of violation. I might not go shoot somebody, but it's going to impact me in some way. That's just like universal law of physics. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, and that's why I go back to the point, man. I, I, I do think fans are part of the problem is too, because to the point you made really early in, the, in this video. Most people aren't willing to admit that they've been influenced by music to that degree. It's like they almost see it as, as weak, you know what I'm saying? But then to your point, it's like, no, we all, oh, no, you made a point on a different episode. It's like, bro, at some point we all get got. Like, if you bro. consume enough of the world, you can't dodge and deflect all the marketing that comes you your can't, way. Bro, it's point, too much of it. Some of it's going to hit you, man. It's like, you know, if, if there are people that disagree with that, I would encourage you to think about, like, what was the first song that, like I said, made you want to do some type of drug you do? What's the first song that made you want to drink? What's the first song that made you want to have sex? What's the first song that made you want to go to a particular place? We all have some type of example of that. That It might not always be as extreme or or profane or something, but there's an example of something in your life that like you heard in a song that made you like, damn, I want to try that or I want to do that. And that I is- I want to get some torque to that song. Yeah, man, I want to, never mind. But you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it's like, we all have an example where the PG or not aware. Like, yeah. like I gave my example, like I said, I, I remember, bro, I mean, the first time I heard my wife, my kid cutting, I was like, bro, I'm smoking weed as soon as I can. As soon as I can, I'm in the country, so I ain't know where to get it. But I'm like, as soon as I figure out where to get it, <laughs> I'm trying that shit. Cause this shit sounds crazy. Like he's humming these melodies and shit. And he's probably high. This would be in high field. Like, I want to be high. Right? Like, I, I remember me thinking that. Like, I can remember me thinking that so vividly. And it's like, you know, like I said, there's, the other like PG versions are like I learned about art investment from Jay Z and blah blah blah. Like, I never really thought about it until listening to that, but it put it in my head and I did more research. I'm like, oh, this is what this is what the game looks like, right? Mm-hmm. And that's because of a Jay Z lyric. You know what I'm saying? So it's like there are good and bad examples of it. You yep. know what I'm saying? On both sides, and it goes back to the point I make. Like if we are willing as a culture to acknowledge and even celebrate the positive wins that come from music, you know what I'm saying? Influence. Then we have to at least acknowledge and be ready to 
fix the negatives that come from it as well. Because like I said, it's, it, you can't really have one without the other. You can mitigate one and increase the other, but you can't really have one without the other. Bro, I think you can have one without the other. In music? Mm. I think not 100%. Let's put it that way. Yeah, maybe like But the proportions can be way better. Yeah. Because you look at other people's music. Yeah. I mean, you look at our music before hip hop. The music doesn't have to be the primary pusher of this specific part of our culture. Yeah. The problem with rap, right, the way it's been overtaken is not that it's been used to share stories and ha allow people to see inside that world. It's the fact that it's gotten to a point where black culture is synonymous with street culture. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's not the fucking truth. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be. But somehow you got people who are not from the street trying to buy their life by street codes. Now, there's some codes that, hey, brother, as far as I'm concerned, that shit just translates. I don't understand why you would be any other way. Mm -hmm. But there's some things that are street specific. You know what I'm saying? That doesn't make sense for you. You really shouldn't even know this shit like that, bro. Like the fact that you it exists. You only know it because of the music. And you only know it because of the music. Yep. And now you're you're trying to judge your blackness, your realness based off of these things that don't even apply to the environment that you're in. Street niggas will tell you in the 90s when they start getting in these boardrooms, they were confused as fuck. Like the way some of these people were acting, some of the things that they were doing, da da da. And like usually that shit would get you killed, right? They, and that would be like the stuff that they would say, right? It's a different environment. And the ones who had won, they were like, I had to adjust. Mm -hmm. You already are being trained in an environment that's closer to what works in most of the world in terms of success, money, business. Doesn't mean that none of the, again, well, we know there's backstabbing and all these, but it's, it works in a different way. There's different yeah. types of consequences. Yet you're spending all this time doing a deep dive and trying to abide by things that are the opposite, the things that they have to train themselves out of. And that's that's the confusion, bro. Like street culture is a is something that exists within black culture. Everybody has a street culture, uh, you know, uh, a criminal culture within their yeah. their community. Like it's not just us. And that's the thing. Like we get to the point where we're thinking like like. Black people are got like the hardest people because they got because we got hood people like everybody else don't got hood people. And then you also people act like people in the hood are like, like the hardest people in the world. Like, nigga, there's people in the hood that are getting their ass beat. There's people in the hood. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's people in the hood that's going to lose to some country white boy in, in a fight or whatever or can't shoot as well because there's a lot of niggas in the hood that don't use a gun right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it's not better than no country white boy, man. I, hey, I, bro. I like, so there's, there's <laughs> like... There's all these things like and, and assumptions that we have and we've built the street rapper into a super thug, as Nori would say, mm -hmm. right? Made this, made this a superhero and that's part of the problem, right? And not part of the problem in terms of watching a movie, right? Part of the problem in terms of kids wanting to be that, mm -hmm. Right, because it's been so admired and put on such a fucking pedestal where you got all these other cultures. Like, they know it exists, but they're trying to separate it. Like, the Italians, like, we're trying to separate themselves from the mafioso in that shit. We, like, uphold the Italian mafia. Like, you look at all these niggas who got names based on Italian movies and shit like mm -hmm. that, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like, every culture has it. We are. I don't want to say the only ones, but in America specifically, right, we put them on a higher pedestal or allow them to be put on that part of our culture, to put on a higher pedestal and represent our culture, not just to ourselves, but the world as a as a greater representation than the other parts of our cultures, which other cultures don't do. Yeah. And let's be clear. The world is a problem. I don't like that we put that as a representation of ourselves. Well, we allow that to be a representation of ourselves to the world. And I know there's other factors and there. there might be some malice and conspiracy that goes into it. Cool. But the more important part is us using that, allowing that to represent ourselves to ourselves. Because it's about us first and us moving however we move. You can't allow, like, you, you know, you can't account for whatever some of these other people are going to do and how they're going to receive you. But we got to spread the most positive message. So this shit Again, it's a gift, we know, mm -hmm. but it's also this weird curse. And I don't know how we work ourselves up out of this space, but shit, like the job rants of the world, man, 
is just like he, he's one of those things where I think it's just never been such a clear, clear, simple, clean cut example where, where people are just out of it. Like there's not much argument where like, oh, y'all misunderstanding this man and you don't know where he can. Like, it's just like, bro, what are you doing? Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But let's end this with um, a couple more statements from Barry and we can get up out of here. He said, I work in music every day and I'm not saying it's anybody's responsibility to watch or parent your kids for you. Oh, that's what he said. I'm not saying it's anybody's responsibility to watch or parent your kids for you. But you are a fool if you don't think outside influences affect kids' minds. And when you constantly listen to something repeatedly, it can affect mood and directions. All right. And he, uh, he, he really went in on his post. And I want to should give credence to all his words because he, he spent his time and some thoughtful shit here. There is data that doesn't show up on record label sheets, but sh but shows up in the fields of data to prove the effects of it. Music has been used in studies for social development. It has been known to increase blood flow to brain regions that generate and control emotions. Music is spiritual. Its ability to spread across nations and bring people together shows music's capabilities. And if we say it can change the world, then it definitely can have an effect on people's behavior. Am I blaming artists for the right of self-expression in art? No, but if art imitates life and our number one expert in the black community is entertainment, that means we sell more life than any other culture. Bar. Man, that was a bar. And it's largely considered, quote unquote, lifestyle music. Then I leave that to you smart people to draw your own conclusions. My only point was imagine what's it doing to the kids that don't have solid upbringing and that live in unstable environments. Just imagine, because we see like what it's doing to people who have stable environments. Yeah, fact, that's right? Broken, yeah, that's broken through the, the whole family structure. Defense. Right. That's broken right. through the family structure of offense. Imagine what it's doing to people without that yeah. defense. You can love something that has both positive and negative outcomes. Sometimes we call that a relationship. <laughs> but but if we keep waiting on a machine, a label that takes responsibility for our culture and its output, then we then we're in trouble. The machine just going to keep spreading the marketing money on whatever we keep co-signing. But hey, say what you want in the comments. I'm open to hear others perspectives. Period. Yeah. We can end it there. Yeah, we got we to we get Barry on here, man. Y'all spam Barry comments, man. <laughs> Let him know he need to come on here. You know hey, <laughs> either way it go, appreciate the sauce, man. The thoughtfulness. Uh, one of my favorite posts I've seen around the Ja situation. And like I said, you know, we've been talking about this behind the scenes on short spurts in the podcast in one way or another before this situation. And this situation just brings it all together beautifully. Let us know what you think on the topic. This is yet another episode of No Labels Necessary podcast. I'm Brandman Sean. And I'm Corey. And we out. Peace.